Hello everyone. Welcome to Yashoda Hospital's online segment, Know Your Doctor session. In this session, we are going to ask doctors different questions to know them better. I'm Dr. Lakshmi and let's welcome Senior Consultant and HOD Nephrologist from Yashoda Hospital's Sikindrabad. Welcome doctor. So doctor, tell us more about yourself and your journey in this medical field. Hi, I'm Dr. Urmila Anand. I am a consultant nephrologist in Yashoda Hospital, Secunderabad. I am in nephrology for almost 25 years. In fact, this month I graduated 1997 in CMC Velour. And after that, this journey in nephrology has been a very exciting and a very encouraging journey. Have worked in some of the best institutions in the country. Have also traveled all over the world. Worked in United States. United Kingdom and Canada. Last seven to eight years I am in Yashoda Hospital where we have actually developed a very dynamic nephrology department which takes care of not just pure simple outpatient nephrology but we have now one of the forefronts in transplant and not just renal transplant but multi-organ transplant. So doctor, you've just mentioned that you've trained and worked in the US and other countries as well. So how different was it working there when compared to India here? So the difference, the major difference working in India and abroad is that part of the world is much more systematic and everything works on based on protocols and there is a defined treatment plan which I think we cannot do in our country because our country is very heterogeneous. Yashoda Hospital is, is trying to bridge this gap and trying its best to develop a very systematic way of handling patients as you will realize in our care in outpatient, in our inpatient care, how we have over the years, Dr. Lakshmi will also understand, have developed a very streamlined system of care. We also hope that over the years corporate hospitals in India will be able to match not only in the skills which we already have but in a systematic approach to healthcare delivery. Yes ma'am, I think that's absolutely right but undoubtedly India is also progressing and maintaining international standard care and protocols as far as medical field is concerned. So women in nephrology, was that by chance or choice? It is actually not by chance but choice and that is something I want to tell all women doctors don't leave anything to chance choose what you want to do and I'm sure somehow or the other you will find a way out I did nephrology because of my interest in internal medicine and nephrology forms a very important integral part of internal medicine and I was privileged to train in one of the best institutions so ma'am, do you think the field of nephrology or renal care is kind of neglected by the general population as far as kidney care is concerned? Yeah, I, I think I tend to agree with you. The awareness for nephrology or as far as kidney health is concerned, it is neglected because of not just the common people but the media perception. They emphasize most on heart disease or brain disease but they forget that kidney is a very important vital organ and failure of both the kidneys actually leads, leads to life-threatening complications. So ma'am, we've just had International Women's Day. So how do you think women in nephrology are relatable to this as far as patient care is concerned? See, I, I appreciate that question because if you know, just a couple of days back we had International Women's Day and this time it was gender e equality for a sustainable tomorrow. and when we have World Kidney Day tomorrow, it is Kidney Health for All. These two messages or themes are actually at variance. Society is now struggling, still struggling to develop uh, gender equality and that's why International Women's Day are emphasizing on equality for all women. And on the World Kidney Day, we are trying to send a message that kidney health should be accessible to all which is actually not true in many countries, including our country. Every aspect of healthcare for women is actually dis discriminated. Take for instance, women have a very high incidence of chronic kidney disease. But how many of them come to the OPD? And when it comes to 
going to an end stage and need requiring dialysis, how many actually get to con get into dialysis programs? More than 50 percent of chronic kidney disease are women, but when it comes to dialysis less than 30 percent are. That is because the society's perception that women if when they fall sick they are actually abundant. Now then you come to transplantation. It is very common to see that maximum number of donors are women and when it comes to receiving a kidney less than 18 percent of total recipients are women. This discrimination is very common and I think as a group we should be looking at it and I am very grateful that my hospital has always supported me and we have developed a system called women in nephrology for women not only women nephrologists in India and we number 300 now when I was there it was only 5 to 10 and also looking at gender issues in nephrology care. That is well said ma'am. I think as women we do not ask enough for ourselves. So, do you think this is correct? I completely agree with you and my mentor in nephrology is Professor Liz Lightstone. She is in United Kingdom. All her life she told me one message and I live by that. She kept on saying do your thing. She was one of the first women nephrologists in United Kingdom. She used to wear all colorful dresses and you know how in UK you are looked down upon if you wear flamboyant dresses. She used to come into the hospital with big earrings and big necklaces and she used to stand out and she could make a place for herself in nephrology society. And I believe all of us, all of our colleagues, the young nephrology fellows and students should actually do what is right for them and ask for themselves. Even in this, two of our students from Yashoda group, Kritika and Namrata I want to mention are actually now very strong social media advocates in nephrology. These two girls have been inspired and inspiring for us and their support with our, from our hospital has actually made them follow which we all want to follow as women nephrologists. Just do your thing. That is uh, really wonderful to know ma'am that so many women in many other fields are coming up and they are excelling in whatever they are pursuing. So ma'am on a lighter note if not a doctor what you would have been? If not a doctor very difficult question. I think I would not have done anything because that is I think the pleasure of doing nothing is very very nice and also please do not forget for a woman doing nothing is not an option. Either you are on a 9 to 5 job as you are and I am or we are on morning 8 to next morning 8 job being a homemaker. So, doing nothing maybe sounds lighter and easier but I think it is the most difficult thing for a woman to do. I am glad that I am a doctor because being a nephrologist or being a doctor as you realize that people think that we are actually very busy and hard working and we get a lot of leeway when we are at home. And that support I have been privileged to have with my parents and with my husband who also works for the same hospital. And so at the end of the day I would like to be a nephrologist and I would like to be a part of a system which supports women. That is right ma'am. So, how do you think one can create a supportive system be it at home or workplace or wherever they are? Dr. Lakshmi, I will ask you how do you think you build up a system for your, uh, uh, how, what are your ways of doing because this is something I never thought because it came my way but we, what do you think is as a uh, woman practitioner? You are also working in a very difficult area of emergency medicine. Yes ma'am, I think uh, you have rightly asked. I think as women, I think we should support each other. It is only when then incredible things happen and the wisdom should be shared. It is only when it is grown. I think each one of us are um, hard working and each one of us are independent and self confident. It is just that uh, we need to find the right support and right path to vent our voice. I think that is how we should go ahead. I think, I think you are you are right and that is what I would like to echo and say our support system is ourselves and our peer group. And that is the reason we all women nephrologists or colleagues in a hospital 
close up, meet together and work together. I look into why are or why only doctors? My hospital outpatient where I have my front desk which is manned by a lady. My staff, my secretarial assistants, all are ladies. We work together, we work with them and we develop a fantastic professional support system. At home also, talk to your family, talk to your parents, talk to your in-laws, your sisters and as you said vent or open up and tell what are your problems. Over a period of time I am sure people are going to listen. The systems have changed, men have started to listen to us and it is not just us now, it's together now. I think that's rightly said ma'am that both men and women contribute equally but differently for the betterment of the society and home. So before ending this episode, what message you would like to give particularly to women out there as far as renal care is concerned? The most important thing is don't neglect any kind of symptoms that you have which may reflect that you have underlying kidney disease. Please understand a common myth is that kidneys are fine as long as you are passing urine properly which is actually not right. 50% of kidney disease patients have normal urine output. So if you just think that every day I am going to the washroom and having adequate urine output and that's when my kidneys are fine that is not true and you all women are going to become pregnant because as somebody said motherhood completes womanhood and that is when many a times we pick up that you have kidney disease so please take care of yourself the way you take care of your family don't neglect your health when your husband comes to a hospital for an annual check checkup tag along with him take care check yourself regularly and be happy and maintain a stressless life. Yes, that's wonderfully said that self-love and self-care are the important things as far as women's health is concerned and undoubtedly regular screening will definitely help in this. So thank you ma'am, it was lovely talking to you. Thank you. So this brings us to the end of this session. Hope you all enjoyed watching this episode and do join us for the next week as well. Thank you and take care.